Hi everyone. In this practice problem, we are going to test our knowledge about trial balance errors. So let's take a look. The problem says for each of the following errors, so all of these are mistakes, determine whether or not the trial balance would identify the error. And of course, you don't want to just guess. You want to be able to explain why or why not that might be the case. So take a few moments, pause the video, come on back when you're ready. I'll walk through the solution. All right, welcome back. So here we go. We'll start off with error A. A debit of $500 was not posted to the cash ledger, but the corresponding credit of 500 was posted to the sales revenue ledger. So in this case, you had a debit amount not make it to the ledger. And of course, if it doesn't go into the ledger, then it's not going to be tallied up in the ledger's end balance. It's not going to show up on the trial balance. So in this case, a debit of 500 didn't make it to the ledgers and therefore not the trial balance, but the credit of 500 did make it to the ledgers and therefore the trial balance. This is going to throw your debits and credits out of whack. And when that happens, the trial balance, yes, will capture it. And that's going to be the running theme through all of these. If the error throws debits and credits out of balance, the trial balance should capture it. If the error does not throw debits and credits out of balance, the trial balance will not capture it. Let's check out B. A journal entry for 13,000 paid to employees was accidentally posted twice. So when you think about a payment to employees, you think debit, salary, and wages expense, credit cash, or something similar of that nature. The debit is 13, the credit is 13. If you do it twice, you're still debiting and crediting for 13, you're just doing it twice for a total of 26. Nonetheless, debits and credits will equal each other in that situation. They'll be wrong, but they'll be equally wrong and therefore the trial balance will not catch this error. Next, a $10,000 collection from a customer was debited to accounts receivable and credited to cash. Now, if we think about that journal entry, a collection from a customer, cash is the thing going up. So cash should be the debit. Accounts receivable is going to be going down because the customer no longer owes you. So credit accounts receivable. What it's saying here is the mistake is you flip-flop these two. But notice, flip-flopping them does not change the fact that you had a debit of 10 and a credit for 10. Therefore, debits and credits still equal each other. No, the trial balance would not catch this mistake. Let's go to D. A $5,000 purchase of inventory was debited to inventory for $5,000 and credited to cash for $50,000. So we're using the right accounts, we're using them in the right position, but the debit is a different amount than the credit. Ultimately, debits and credits will not equal each other. This will be caught by the trial balance. And our last one, a journal entry for the $2,000 payment of rent was accidentally not recorded. So assuming all else is correct, leaving a journal entry out does not change the fact that debits and credits equal each other. The debits will be wrong, the credits will be wrong, but they will be equally wrong. Debits and credits will still equal each other, and no, the trial balance would not capture that. That's it for trial balance errors. Hope you found it helpful. Please join me for another video.